So this is the what we call the analytics miner. And again, you can incorporate this into an app builder application. And what you see on the left-hand side of the screen is our facet navigation. Think of facets as being terms of interest that you want to be able to begin doing analytics on. Some of these are um, like vehicle information. What we're looking at is data from the National Highway Transportation Safety Association in the U.S. Um, this is a database of information where anybody can go onto their website and put in information about an incident or a problem with their vehicle. And that data is freely downloadable. And it comes as an XML file, and things like manufacture, make, model, year, so forth, are all identified as individual fields in that XML file. But then within the body of that document, is also a general description of what occurred. So for example, if I bring this one up, you know, within the description, when rear end with foot on brake, etc. So what we want to be able to do is not just do analytics on the structured fields, but also on the unstructured part. And in this case, you'll see facets for parts of speech, phrases, sentiment analysis, terms of interest, document clustering. These are all annotations that the product did out of the box. So as the data was read and ingested, parts of speech were identified and metadata was associated to be able to do uh, indexing on parts of speech, say with nouns, phrases, um, sentiment analysis, positive, negative, etc. And then you can create custom annotations, which I'll show you a little bit in, uh, in a minute. Across the top here, we have the different types of analysis we can do. We can do by facet, and you'll notice there's a frequency and correlation column here. We'll come back to that in a little bit. We can do things based on time, deviations from norms, trends, compare different facets together, look at sediment, and a couple others. So we're going to start. Many of you have probably heard, you know, in the past there was an issue with Toyota and um, unexpected accelerations due to problems with their uh, throttles and a little bit with their floor mats. And it took them quite a while to identify this, and they ended up paying some significant fines by the time they got around to doing recalls. So if we wanted to take a look at how you might find that kind of information, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to select Make. I'm going to sort that. And I'm going to have two, you know, people spelled Toyota a couple different ways. So I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to come up here and click this button to do a query based on an N. I can also do an OR and an XOR. And so by just pressing that, a query gets created. I don't have to type in the query. I could if I wanted to, but it makes it easier for me. So now I'm only taking a look at incidents that included the manufacturer Toyota somewhere within the document. I'm going to come over to time series, and in 2009 and 2010, this is when people were became really aware of it. And so I'm going to start looking at data prior to that, just to you know, so that I'm not using data from you know when people already knew that this was a problem and people were going in and entering a lot of records. So I'm choosing 2000 to 2008. I'm going to add that to my query. So now I can start taking a look at what kind of problems might have occurred at this time. So if I come down and expand on the incident info and look at components and back to facets, now what I'm seeing is I can sort this by frequency. So there were lots of um, incidents around vehicle speed control. But more important, let's take a look at this correlation. What you'll see 
it, correlation is telling me, you know, regardless of the frequency, how statistically important is this particular value based on this query. So I may, for example, just, you know, I might have sorted this based on cars that have had accidents in wet road conditions. And I might have a frequency of Toyota that's very high and one of another manufacturer that's lower, but a correlation might be higher for that other one. And what that would tell me is for the number of vehicles for that other manufacturer, and there were messing this one up a little bit, sorry, but what it would tell me is that there was more statistically relevant for that other uh, manufacturer. In other words, you know, the frequency may be due to the fact that there were more cars sold by Toyota, but the percentage that were actually involved in wet road accidents was higher with the second manufacturer. So basically, just think of this as statistic relevance. And what we'll see here, now I can go through each of these, but I'm gonna focus on speed control. You know, still fairly relevant. Anything over one is pretty relevant. And I'm gonna sort now based on speed control And I'll see some others over here. And in fact, I'm going to get rid of cruise control here. So I'm picking vehicle accelerator pedal, speed control, fairly high frequencies, very high correlations. So now I started with nine, over 900,000 documents or incidents. Now I'm down to a little over 1,100. And let's check to see whether or not these are serious. So we'll look at injuries and we'll see that, you know, there were, oh, about 120 injuries reported. Look at deaths, we'll see that, you know, seven deaths reported. So what we're beginning to show is that the problem that we're investigating here is fairly serious and is something that we want to investigate further. If we come down over here and now take a look at noun sequence, one of the other things that we'll see is, again, if we sort on correlation, is that most of these incidents had to do with the Toyota Camry. And so if we focus just on the Camry for a little bit, now we've gone to you know, 145 incidents, and we've that's enough to allow somebody to actually now begin to look at the specific documents to begin to understand what's happening. Now, a person isn't going to be able to go through 900,000 documents, but 100 documents, 150 documents, a team of people can come through that fairly easily. So what we're trying to show here is that we can continue to look at the data and find out new things that we may not have known. When we started this, we may not have known that there was a problem with acceleration, but the data begins to show us that there is. We can also begin to look at how did that look over time? And what we'll see as we do this is that it seems to have increased, you know, 2007, 2008 we're seeing more and more incidents. We can begin to combine facet pairs. Let's look at, um, for example, the model of the car versus the component to see if we can get additional information. So these are all statistics and all an analytics that you can do, and it's all fo fo focused on both the unstructured data as well as the structured data. Going back to the presentation for a minute, this is just an example of the data that we were just looking at. But I want to end on a couple more slides. So as I mentioned earlier, there's certain annotators that the content analytics will do as part of the ingestion, as part of the core capability of the system. 
but you can build custom annotators and there's two ways of doing it. There's a product called Content Analytics Studio that comes as part of Watson Explorer. It allows you to build using a graphical interface role-based annotators using things like regular expressions or sequence of words and how often they occur and where they occur. And so you can build a custom annotator here and then make that as part of the ingestion process so that you can identify new information both as your, in your search as well as in the content analytics.